In the previous episode, we suggested that a door can be taped or a card used to prevent the spring-loaded latch from engaging the door frame. Here's a selection of the feedback we received, saying that this would never work. This is the same Scott shipping tape that Paddock used, with the same blue box on the left and the blue strip on the right. For the test, we used a typical dirty door, not cleaned or treated in any way. The test starts at around 11 p.m. We tape over the latch, and leave it taped overnight. After nearly 12 hours, the tape holds the latch with no problem whatsoever. You can even remove the tape further away from the latch and it still holds fine. The test works even in the weakest possible configuration, with a single vertical strip over the latch. There's no reason to even test stronger configurations, such as a horizontal wrap around the latch, or taping the hole on the other side, or taping both the latch and the hole, or using double tape. You simply tape the latch top to bottom, with the latch withdrawn, exactly as shown in the old TV show. It works perfectly. A common, but rather strange objection, is that Paddock used the tape for the hammer, or the food cart, or the peephole camera, or whatever else. I don't know if people know this, but a tape can be used for multiple purposes. If you tape one thing, it doesn't prevent you from taping some other thing. Another objection is that Paddock had plenty of door cards, so why the need for tape? Having many cards is great, unless you're trying to do something dodgy. If you're testing multiple cards or trying to jam the lock, you may fear an automatic lockout procedure, which will block your access, the same way trying multiple pins at an ATM will block your access. This is not good if you're stressed for time, as Paddock was. A tape allows you entry back into the room no matter what happens. We know that Paddock was most likely testing the doors previously. In this instance, the door is open, but he's throwing and releasing the deadbolt for no obvious reason. The most plausible reason is that he's testing it. The channel which questions the log makes other dubious claims. It claims that a shipping tape would leave the surface tacky. This is false. A shipping tape leaves no easily detectable residue on a smooth surface, if left on for a brief period of time and under normal temperature. Actually, the reverse is true. The tape picks up small debris, dust, flakes, etc. It actually leaves the surface cleaner than before, not tackier or dirtier. This is why CSI use similar tape to lift fingerprints or pick up tiny debris. This is also why similar tape is used to pick up lint or pet hair. You probably would need to resort to molecular spectrography to detect residue from such a tape on a smooth surface. The channel asks where the piece of tape is. It may have been reused by Paddock for the hammer. Or the peephole camera. Or to help Paddock grip pieces of glass. It may have been tossed in the trash and not listed in the fit report. Or, dare we point out, it may have been simply thrown out of a broken window. The channel also released another video, now taken down, probably because the channel realized it was painting itself into a corner. In it, the channel showed the log entry for the door breach in 32135. The entry reads, door open from inside, even though we know this not to be true. This supports the view that such a log entry simply reflects the state of the sensors, not any actual human activity on the inside. But if you admit that there was no human activity on the inside during the breach, you have to admit that the same may be true for the log entry in question. The video, now taken down, made other wild claims. It suggested that MGM or cops may have edited out events from the door log. As alleged evidence of this nefarious editing. The channel shows a sequence in which the staff is restocking the bar, but there is no door opened event. Why would MGM or cops remove such a trivial event in an unimportant activity, in effect letting the entire world on their evil scheme? Such a trivial sequence missing an event tells us missing entries are random, not deliberate. The channel claims to be in charge of a door monitoring system, and that he never sees missing entries. The problem here is scale. As a network grows, communication problems grow exponentially. There's a big difference between monitoring a lab with a few dozen doors, and an entertainment campus with nearly 5,000 rooms, and probably an additional thousand storage rooms, utility spaces, halls, kitchens, etc. Mandalay Bay uses the deep mesh monitoring system by Incom, designed to handle thousands of rooms. Communication problems inherent in large networks are acknowledged in its brochure, 
where the system advertises its enhanced reliability by using multiple paths for information packets. The channel also made a claim that the door open sensor is on the latch itself. The exploded diagrams of card entry locks show that there are no sensors on the latch. It would be very uncommon for the door open sensor to be on the latch, because oxidation and denting would quickly render such a technique useless. Door open sensors are usually magnetic, either mounted externally, or recessed into the door. YouTuber Daniel James released a very good video to address the claim by some channels that the window in 32135 wasn't broken during the breach. Those who obsess about the no broken window quote, referring to the bedroom, commit the classic mistake of applying our present knowledge of an event to those acting in the past. When the SWAT team entered Paddock's suite, they knew only about the shooting towards the festival. Since they discovered that the Vista suite, as the name implies, wraps around the entire building, they feared that Paddock may have shot in all possible directions, like Whitman on the Texas Tower. This is the meaning of we have no broken window in the bedroom. What the officer is simply communicating, is that there were no shots fired in directions other than the festival, and they need to concentrate on the known broken windows. The fact that the shooting only targeted the festival is what we now know. The SWAT team didn't know it back then. But the simplest argument against the no broken window claim is the airflow. There is no motion of the tablecloth prior to the breach, with the door to the stairway open. When 32135 is breached, the tablecloth starts to move. If someone claims that the window in 135 wasn't broken, then the airflow cannot come from a broken window, and the burden is on you, to tell us where the airflow is coming from. If you can't provide a plausible answer, your claim has no merit. 